In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make a Loki crown for your pet. I have my printed template and I'll also need a piece of two millimeter cosplay foam. This template only uses a tiny bit, so it's a great project for a scrap piece. Because this template is so small, I wanna make sure that every cut is extremely accurate to the template. And I have some tips for you on how to do this, so keep watching. I like to staple my template to the foam and then go in and cut out the shapes apart from each other, leaving a bit of space around each shape so that I can staple it some more. I'll add a staple about every one or two inches around each shape to make sure that it doesn't budge as I'm cutting off the excess. I'll start by cutting pieces A and B, which are slightly different. I'm going to switch to my very sharpest scissors, this way I can get a nice clean cut. As I'm using these scissors, I'm going to avoid opening and closing my hands too much. I'll close my hands very slowly and very deliberately. As I'm cutting, I'll focus specifically on the line where the scissors are closing, and I'll put a little bit of pressure with my thumb right next to the cut. I'll move slowly and I'll close the scissors as I move down the line. When it comes time to reposition the scissors, I'm opening the scissors and then placing them against the material again before closing them, and making sure the new cut is following the line of the previous one. This will prevent a jagged edge that I'd have to go back and correct. And with such a small project, I think it's best to go slow now instead of having to fix rough edges later. Now that I've cut piece A and B, I can stack them on top of each other and you can see that they are slightly different. There's this nice little lip on the interior of the base piece. Uh, whoops, and I realized that I forgot to cut the dart, so I just placed the template back on top and cut the piece out. Next, I'll cut piece C, which is the horns. I'll cut the bottom of the horns, just as we have been. But for the side of the horns, I'm going to do something a little different. As I'm cutting, I'm going to pull down on the horn, and that's going to allow the scissors to cut a little bit more out from the back than from the front, so it's going to give me a bit of a taper on the end see that. That's going to make the point of the horn be a little bit more graduated and it's going to come together easier when I glue it. So here you can see the difference between the back and the front. And for these tiny pieces I'm going to try to be as accurate as possible as well. And for this little one I'm going to add a detail in the center with a blade and now I'm ready to glue. I was happy to find that this Elmer's rubber cement worked well on this lightweight foam because it doesn't smell as much as some other adhesives so that's what I decided to use. To glue the horns together I added glue to the base of the horn on both sides and I was a little messy but that's okay. And then I aligned the base and I pressed the edges together. And basically I moved up the horn and kept pressing the edges together and now I'll add a little bit more glue to the top of the horn and keep going. Now I have the whole seam glued down all the way to the tip and I repeated the same steps on the other horn. To make the tip extra pointy I removed a little bit of material from right at the end and that gave me a little bit more of a point. I took a piece of sculpture wire and I molded it to the shape of the face piece. Then I added rubber cement to pieces A and B and placed the piece of sculpture wire on top of one of the pieces. I made sure that it wasn't covering either of the darts so it was kind of out of the way. Then I glued the two pieces together aligning the darts on the top and focusing on the outer edge of the entire piece. So all of the outer edges need to be completely aligned. So I just went slowly around the piece and made sure everything was good and then gave it a nice squeeze to make that connection permanent. This is what it looked like when I was done. That's the back and this is the front. So everything is nicely aligned. So now it's time to connect the darts together. I just added glue to the interior of the dart, I let it dry, and then I started to close it, pressing it closed and angling the foam towards the back of the face piece. This will start to give it its 3D shape. I continued to sculpt the three-dimensional shape using the wire inside the foam and just manipulated the face piece until it looked like it would wrap around my dog's face. So you can see how now it is this 
completely three-dimensional object. To add the embellishments, I added glue to the center of this piece here and glued the triangular piece into the center of it. So it just connects and it makes a very slightly three-dimensional shield. So I added some glue to this and placed it right at the very center, aligning the top edge of the triangle with the top of the face piece. I added glue to the bottom part of the tiny horns and then wrapped the tiny horns around the shield piece, letting the horns stick out from the top. To create the bent shape of the horns, I added some sculpture wire into the interior of the horn. Then when I bent the wire, the horn gave the appearance of having the bend to it. And then I repeated that for the other horn. So now now I have two bent horns. Then I added glue to the face piece where the dart is and I added glue to the base of the horn. I connected the two, aligning the seam on the back of the horn with the dart so that both horns are positioned exactly the same on both sides. I placed the second horn and then I gave the shape of the piece another look and I manipulated the shape to bulge a little bit more on the sides. I think this looks more sinister and more regal at the same time. Now to keep these horns on my dog's face, I added a wire to the back using a scrap piece of foam to keep it in place. Now it's time to paint. I started with a dark brown color and used this as a base and then I went in and painted gold on top. Now I diluted my gold to kind of let the brown show through at first. This was a part of my process to kind of learn the shape and figure out where the highlights and shadows should be. And then I kind of went back and forth between brown and gold to give it this metallic sheen and three-dimensional look. Once the paint is dry, it's time to see if the Dog of Mischief approves. Good boy. Don't you want a belly scratch? Good boy. Good boy gets a belly scratch. Yeah. Good boy. Good. I am Loki of Asgard, and I am burdened with glorious cuteness.